Hello and welcome to this Tech Tip Tuesday where we're going to take a look at creating extruded frames in SolidWorks. I'm Jeremy Rignaris, Customer Advocacy and Community Manager at SolidWorks. Last week in my Throwback Thursday post, I talked about the history of the weldment features inside of SolidWorks and how they've evolved over the years. At the end of that article, I talked about using weldment tools for things other than structural frame weldments. And that's what this presentation is all about creating aluminum extruded frames. Before we can do this, we need to ask ourselves a question. What is a weldment in SolidWorks? Once we do that, we're going to show how to create these frames, starting with how to create a profile for an aluminum extruded frame. Then we'll look at the unique tools for creating 3D sketches, building the frame up, and finally, we'll take a look at some tips and tricks when working with multi-body part files and finally detailing and documenting a frame using cut lists and bill of materials. So let's start with that first question. What is a weldment inside of SolidWorks? And what we mean is the software. We all know what a weldment is, but in terms of software, what is it? Well, it's a unique set of tools for designing structural frames. Specifically, there's a special tab on the command manager that has a set of tools that are focused on creating these types of designs. Structural frames or weldments are also multi-body part files inside of SolidWorks. These unique types of files are very similar to assemblies, but they have some limitations. For example, you don't have the full range of motion like you would in an assembly, but they're much easier to work within. As there's only a single file, there's no files that you have to worry about managing. And when you're done and you get a cut list, those cut list items will be supported in SolidWorks Enterprise PDM. Weldment parts also have a unique feature in their feature manager tree called the weldment feature. This is going to turn on some key tools and some unique properties that really make weldments suitable for this type of design task. The last thing they contain is a cut list. And this is really important when it comes to creating documentation. Your cut list is what's going to contain all the unique information. So what didn't we say was a weldment in SolidWorks? nothing requires it to be welded tubes. So though the tools were originally conceived for this type of design, there's no reason we can't use them for aluminum extruded frames. In fact, there's a lot of advantages. The first one is getting a full cut list of all of our parts. Some of the manufacturers of these types of products allow you to send them the pre-cut lengths and angles and they'll actually cut the tubes and ship them to you requiring you only to assemble them. So there's a lot of time savings to be had with SolidWorks here. So let's get started with the basics. Creating a profile. Weldment structural members use something called a profile, which is nothing more than a 2D sketch. But do we have to create it from scratch? Let's look at actually where we can find some of these first. The first great resource is 3D Content Central. This is a SolidWorks website that literally contains millions of components. But did you know 3D Content Central can actually be accessed from within inside of the design library right inside of SolidWorks? In this case, we're going to use the supplier 8020 and we're going to download one of their profiles. Once downloaded, this company happens to supply their parts as full 3D parts. But profiles are actually 2D sketches. So the first thing we want to do is remove the extrude feature while retaining the original sketch profile. Once we do this, we want to look at the sketch and see what information is really necessary. There's a big difference between the profile on the left and the profile on the right. It's all up to you to determine what features and geometric shapes are important for your design. In this case, we're going to look at simplifying the profile to come up with a result on the right. So how do we do this? Once we start editing the sketch, we can use the Display Delete Relationships tool inside of the sketch environment to delete all of the sketch relations. And then we'll do something that's usually recommended not to do in SolidWorks, and that's fix all the sketch geometry in place. Now, why do we choose fix? Well, because we're dealing with a purchase part, chances are we're not going to actually be changing the physical size of it. So in this case, it's definitely all right to do this to quickly lock down the profile. From there, we want to remove any of the excess geometry that's not going to be necessary for our design. Now keep in mind, you don't have to do this. I'm doing it to keep my design simple. I'm going to remove all the fillets. 
Then once that's done, using the corner trim tool, you can go through and quickly clean all the geometry back up and join all the endpoints together. You'll also notice a vertical and horizontal construction line where their endpoints end at the midpoint of our profile. These are important as any point in your profile can be used for locating it with the weldment tool later on. Once that's done, you'll want to click the Add to Library button in the Design Library. When you do this, you'll get a dialog box similar to that on the left where you'll specify the file location. You want to make sure that this is where you store your weldment profiles, which can be found in your system's options. You also specifically need to specify that the file is a library feature part .sld lfp. The weldment tool specifically needs to utilize this type of file. Let's look at creating our weldment now. To do this, we want to create a 3D sketch. This button or this tool is actually in the Command Manager tab for the weldment tools as it's one of the most natural ways to create a frame. Now, there's a few things to note about 3D sketches. They have a lot more relationships than the 2D environment. As we start incorporating the Z-axis in addition to X and Y, it can get a little confusing. 3D sketches can seem intimidating at first, but if you follow these tips, they're not really any more challenging. You just need to keep your eye on a few things. The first key thing is be aware of the X, Y, and Z coordinates. We are working in a 3D tool after all, so it's important to understand that sometimes we'll be sketching this way. Keep things simple. There's no need to overcomplicate your sketches. If you find that a 3D sketch is getting too complicated, break it up into multiple simple 3D sketches. Also, use 3D planes to help orientate yourself. By double clicking on any system plane, or, or any plane for that matter, while in the 3D sketch environment, it'll create a temporary plane which you can sketch entities onto as though you were working in a 2D sketch environment. And then make sure to use the right sketch tools. For example, when you want to draw a symmetric rectangle, use center rectangle, not three-point corner or parallelogram. This will make the process go much quicker. A few other things when you're working here. When you're creating a 3D sketch, watch your cursor. You'll notice a red arrow that signifies the sketch plane that you're working on. Now when I say plane, the orientation that the geometry is being drawn. You can use your tab key at any time to toggle between these. It definitely makes sketching a lot easier. The other thing is when you draw a line perfectly along the X, Y, or Z orientation, it'll add a sketch relationship called along X, Y, or Z. This greatly simplifies the time it takes to create a 3D sketch. So let that snapping do the work for you. Draw your lines straight down, straight across, and straight up. And don't try to draw them at angles and then go back later and add the relationships. In this case, for example, I wanted to use snapping and you'll notice I have a very underdefined sketch. Well, if you've used SolidWorks for any length of time, you know that after the fact, you can simply drag and drop the endpoints on top of each other and snap them into place. Finally, make sure you add any remaining dimensions so that your sketch is fully defined. 3D sketches can be harder to fully define than 2D sketches, but you still want to make sure all your geometry is black. Then add any additional information, making sure that the geometry is fully defined and you capture the appropriate design intent. In this case, I used a midpoint relationship to maintain symmetry. So let's go about creating the actual frame itself. There's a handful of tools and a few tricks through here, so we'll try to cover all of our bases. The first thing you want to do is use the structural member tool. When you do this in the property manager, you get a series of pull downs. The first one is your standard. In this case, I name the folder the name of the company, 8020. Then choose the type of profiles. I have a series of profiles from simple profiles like we created in detailed ones with all the fillets, and then finally the size. Keep in mind that your profiles aren't limited to structural steel. As I mentioned, in this case, we'll be using 8020 profiles. All that's left is to simply select the sketch elements that you would like to add structural members to. In this case, the bottom rectangle. 
simply select around and go along the side and then you want to make sure you align the profile in the correct orientation. Now this is where those construction lines become important, specifically when working with profiles like these with things such as T-slots in them. Any point in your sketch can be used to locate the profile. In this case, we've selected the lower left corner to make sure that our profiles uh, represent the outside the dimensions of our design. Corner treatment is another tool to use while you're sketching. Don't just create all your structural members on the geometry and then expect to trim them up later. Use the appropriate tools at hand. For instance, corner treatment, wherever you see a magenta bubble on your profile, you can click on it and change it from a mitered corner to a one of two butt joints. Make sure to save yourself some time down the road and select the correct butt joint while you're doing this. Finally, use groups to quickly create your frame. By clicking the new group button, you can continue to add more members using the same profile that you've previously selected. This was a new enhancement several years ago, and some people haven't quite realized that this is available. This is a really quick way to create a new frame. Now, let's get into some of the things that you really got to watch out for when using aluminum extruded frames when it comes to trimming. When you trim, there's two ways of doing it. The first is using face or plane trim. When you select the tool, you can select any planar face and use that as a trimming tool, but you're presented with this. You have to choose which geometry to keep and which geometry to discard. This can get a little bit cumbersome. The other method is using body trim, where you choose which bodies to trim with and what to keep or remove. There are a few things here. Notice the checkbox, allow extension, and the icons underneath it. You'll want to uncheck this and use the simplified extension method on the left. If you use the method on the right, your features may extend into those T-slots, creating undesired results. Now we're going to look at importing other bodies into our multi-body part file, because this is what we're working with now. A few notes. Any external component or part file can be added to a weldment file. You can do this by simply dragging and dropping the part in or using insert part from the pull down menu. Either way, it will be considered a derived part, which is almost like inserting a part into an assembly in that if you make any changes to the apparent part, they update here. The difference is, is it's converting it into a solid body inside of our current part file. Once that's done, when you drag and drop it, you have a few options. You can mate it just like parts inside of an assembly, though the number of mates is limited. When it's drag and dropped, you're presented with the Move Copy Bodies option and the ability to import planes. These will definitely help when you're creating mates. And finally, mate references, just like in an assembly, are supported in this environment as well. When you drag and drop it and you create the mates, you'll notice that you can use this to position components, just like you would inside of an assembly. The difference is, is if you've left out any degrees of freedom, you won't be able to simply click and drag on the solid body and move it around. Now, this process, though fast, can be time consuming. So use tools like mirror bodies to save yourself plenty of time. For example, mirroring this plate from the right plane over to the other side and then over to the front as well. You can also use normal features. Once you've specified that this part is a weldment file, the merge bodies option in the extrude dialog box is unchecked by default, which means you can add plates relatively quickly. If you decide to enable merge bodies, make sure to use the selection scope to specify which bodies to merge with. Once this is all done, you'll notice if you look on the left side, the image on the left, your cut list contains every solid body in your file. You'll want to right click on this icon and choose update. What this will do is it will find all the solid bodies that have the exact same geometry and combine them into a single item. This is going to be critical for your cut list to update when it comes time to create the drawing. At any time you create your own features as well, you'll want to make sure that you add custom properties similar to a new part file. Though keep in mind, anything you import, such as the bracket 
or the structural profiles themselves, they already contain this information. So in this case, the plate was created as an extemporal extrude feature. We'll want to right click and choose properties and enter the relevant information. This is done just like inside of any other file in SolidWorks. You can link to custom values such as the material, enter part numbers and descriptions, but you'll also notice that SolidWorks automatically captures information for the cut list, such as the length. So when it comes time to create the drawing, you really do this like you would any other part or assembly with a few special exceptions. Not hindrances, but advantages. Let's take a look at those next. So you start by creating the drawing and adding the views. What you'll want to do next is insert a cut list. These are just like bills of materials, but as I've been mentioning, they contain a few unique properties, such as the length. This is really important as this is the big advantage for using the weldment tools for this type of application. Once that's been added, you might want to create unique detail views or sheets of individual solid bodies. This is a great use for the relative view button inside of drawings. When you use relative views, it walks you through the process of selecting which bodies you want to create specific views of, in this case we're going to choose the tabletop, and then you select faces to specify which what will represent the front view or the right view or any combination of these. It's your choice. So we've gone through this process and shown this and hopefully you've seen that the weldment tools inside of SolidWorks can be used for a lot more than just structural tubing weldments but also have value in any multi-body environment. That's it for this Tech Tip Tuesday and hopefully you find this information valuable. Please comment on the SolidWorks social media platforms such as Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. I'm Jeremy Rignaris, User Advocacy and Community Manager. Thank you.